Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of our out of the park kind of tutorial style thing. In this episode, we're going to go over how to set up your roster and kind of how to use things looking at just the pitchers. This episode will be just the pitchers. The next episode, I will do hitters. And then the third episode of this, I guess, tutorial series, I will do the actual players and setting them up individually. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode where I go over basically how to do things in Out of the Park Baseball 21. This week's episode, I'm kind of taking suggestions on what you guys want to see. And it came in to me that you guys wanted to see some Out of the Park Baseball where we, we make lineups to pitching bullpen rotations and then some tips in the platooning and balancing the roster. And this was brought in to me from Jonathan who shows up on youtube a lot shows up to the live streams so if you ever wanted to see live stream shows up to those and he had some questions kind of about the roster how to structure things how to platoon players how to balance your roster pitching rotations stuff like that so i'm really going to dive deep into those things today basically the how to build your team's roster and how to build them to succeed during the simulation process because it's one thing to create a team that's just stacked and you don't have to worry about you know setting your lineups necessarily for the teams that do want to win for the teams that do want to kind of succeed and up their game and win a few games here and there and teams that kind of want to turn an 80 win season into maybe a 90 win season these are going to be some of the ways that you could do so so we're just starting with our roster that we did last time so nothing huge here but if you don't know how to get to the roster there's many places you can do it uh, a lot of people have used the side thing to get to the roster i believe it's right here you can do editing pitching staff edit your lineups uh, transactions call people up and down you can also do it through here go through the GM and manager actions here and then you can manage pitching staff set your lineups depth chart all that stuff here as well so we're gonna go ahead and just do it here we're gonna go to our pitching staff first we picked the Rays mostly because they just have kind of an overabundance of everything. They got good starting pitching. They got great prospects. They got, I mean, they got a solid team batting. So I kind of want to just go over all of that. First thing we're going to do is just show you the screen in case you don't really understand what you're looking at. It is a lot when you get into this to look at something and be like, wow, that's a lot of numbers, a lot of stats. We'll go over it now. So this is our roster. The green up here are your starters. They are also down here in your starting rotation. And those are going to be the guys that start the game for you. Now, you do many, many things with your starters. First, we're going to go off by saying, you know, these are the names your age, your, your, your throwing, which is probably the only thing that you really care about when it comes to pitchers is the throwing side stuff movement. That's kind of just how they throw the stuff is like kind of how, how good a stuff they have, the better the stuff they have, the more kind of strikeouts they get more swing and misses that type of stuff. The movement is basically how your pitches move. The control is how good they are at controlling those pitches. And then the stuff, again, versus left-handed batters and versus right, you can kind of see that they're better at versus rights than lefts. Here, they're about the same. Here, they're better at righties versus lefties. Here, they're really good versus righties and not so good versus lefties. Uh, the velocities, the staminas, which you want to make sure that you have stamina as a starting pitcher because they're going to be your guys that go deep in the ball games. You're looking for usually six innings out of them. I think it's five for an actual win. If you pitch five innings, you can actually get a win. I believe that's what it is. But I usually try to get six innings at least. This is out of a scale of 80. So the 60 is 60 of 80. Uh, stamina, you know, going down here. Your closers obviously are going to have lower stamina. They don't really need to do anything like that. So going back to the pitching, again, these are your starting five. They are also down here in the starting rotation. And all of the rotation settings are right here. This is where you're going to set the fact that you're using a five-man, six-man. Most teams use a five-man, but I believe Tampa Bay used a four-man rotation last year. 
and had got a guy kind of floating around and i believe it was yarborough who floated around for a while but i don't know how they finished the season but you can make it a six-man rotation and then you can add another pitcher down here so say you want this uh, banda guy down here to be a starting pitcher you'll click drag him to the six spot and boom he is now the six rotation guy most of the times you're only going to want a five man rotation because that's usually how long it takes around for the pitchers to get back to full strength usually they're in a five or six day cycle depending on by days depending on how long they pitch so if charlie morton pitches only two innings and only throws 40 pitches when his fifth day comes up he's going to be more you know relaxed and more energized than before because he didn't pitch as long last time so all that stuff it plays into a factor and out of the park they definitely take that into consideration down here we'll see your next starter so once charlie morton plays a game this next starter will change to whoever you can also if say uh glass now uh, is is a little is a little tired it's his turn to pitch and he's a little tired and brennan mckay is full strength and ready to go and come down here to the next starter put it on mckay and then boom he's next up to pitch the next thing is the rotation mode and this is kind of hard to explain what's what the difference is so the strict on occasion highest rested is kind of what i showed you there say it's charlie morton's turn and he's say 50 percent um tired and glass now is 100 percent they will go ahead and switch it to glass now for the pitching and that's just basically they're going to do occasionally the highest rested if it's if it's really bad comparison they'll switch to the highest rested but they're going to stick mostly to the order that your pitchers are in you can also do strict order where it automatically goes one through five then back through one through five again or you could just do always start the highest rested guy so yarborough pitched last game charlie morton's at 78 percent glass knows at 55 percent and brendan mckay's at 98 percent because he didn't have a very long start it will automatically start brendan mckay over uh charlie morton glassstone all that stuff so this is what the rotation mode will do now this down here usually i say no but depending on how your team's set up i could possibly see someone using yes so this is basically saying that you will never allow a starting pitcher to be in relief so say we're we have a huge game we're using all all our bullpen basically here we're in the 19th inning so it's 10 innings after it's supposed to be there you're going to make the decision are you going to allow a starter to come in and pitch or are you just going to basically use up all your bullpen and once you're done i mean you put a position player in or something if you're wanting a starter to be a part of your relief go ahead and click yes and say you know you're in the 18th inning or whatever and you have your closer left though we're going to bring in a starter instead of using your closer the next thing over the bullpen is kind of going over roles and how to use them so your bullpen guys are the guys down here that are not in green these right next to them tell you what they are relief pitching is rp cl is closer so going over that this is what we got we got our closer at the top his primary role is our closer and so this guy is going to be the guy that closes the games out. This is the guy that comes in the ninth inning to try to stop a three run, two run, or one run lead. To try to get the close, you can do usage options, which allows you to set how often he's used, whether or not you want him just in the ninth inning or later, or if you want to push him to the eighth inning or the eighth or later. And then the last thing is going to be secondary role. If you're wanting this person to be more than just a primary role, usually what you do, and they have it set up here in Diego Castillo, he's a setup man, which is usually means he comes in in the eighth inning or later. I'm going to leave that. And then we're saying if Nick Anderson is not able to pitch to the closing role, then Diego Castillo will come in as our closer for his secondary role. Same thing with Jose Alvarado. He's a setup guy, but he we have set up in the seventh inning or later. You could change these around if you like. Uh, if you like Alvarado coming in the eighth, you could change this to the eighth, this to seventh, or you can leave them both eighth or later, and they'll put and they'll usually just choose one and use these guys down here more often. And then the specialist, the specialist is a guy that comes in if basically they need one out 
or they need a special type of person. So say they got a bunch of lefties coming in. Um, they got a bunch of lefty batters coming up to bat. They got three in a row. This would be a specialist thing because he is a lefty. You would throw him in and basically face all lefties in that lineup. Kind of go over all of these. Your closer is going to be the guy that comes in in the ninth inning like Nick Anderson. Your stopper is usually guys that if there's like two or three guys on base and you're wanting basically to stop stop the bleeding, you're going to put him in there. The setup guy usually sets up the closer, so tries to get you through the eighth inning so that you could close it out in the ninth. Specialist, I just explained, that's basically where you bring him in for a a certain reason whether it be you know lefty versus lefty matchups or or bring him in to try to get all ground balls a guy that has a sinker and like a splitter and a, a two seam fastball is more likely to get ground out so if you need a double play a specialist will be a guy that comes in and tries to get you that double play middle relief is the guys in the middle kind of you get five great innings out of your starter the middle relief is the guys that come in in like the sixth and seventh innings you try to kind of just, you know, in the middle of the game, just give you those innings. Long relief is a guy that you want to have um, a, quite a bit of stamina. You want more than just, you know, 30, 40. You kind of want the 45, 50s. And those are going to be the guys that if your starter has a very awful game, say he gives up six runs in two innings, then your long, long relief guy is going to come in the third inning and try to give you um, innings three through six or three through eight or something like that. They're going to come in and basically take over the starting role and try to get you through to the later innings. Your emergency starting pitcher is if, you know, this guy shows up to the ballpark and he's going through, through workouts and whatever and he jams this finger and he's not able to pitch today your emergency starting pitcher will then fill in that role and be the starting pitcher so anthony banda say we put him in as a emergency starting pitcher uh morton comes he has a jam thumb he can't throw the ball so anthony banda is going to get to start that day that's the emergency starting pitcher high leverage are going to be the guys that you just bring in in high leverage situations say it's in the seventh inning, you're up by one run, the bases are loaded and only one out. A high leverage guy is going to be the guy that comes in and tries to get you out of the inning without giving up as many runs as possible. That would be a high leverage situation. Then what it wasn't really a thing until Tampa Bay made it a thing. And this is what they used to do with Ryan Yarbrough. They used to use a opener and a follower. So they used to, and I don't think they did it at the end of the season. I don't think it ended up working out the way they wanted to, so they kind of went back to the, I guess, original five-man rotation. Is They had a four-man rotation, and then they had Ryan Yarborough, who would come in, pitch three innings as an opener. That would be him. And usually your starters go five or six innings. But an opener comes in for three innings, pitches for three innings, and then usually you have a follower. So you have... You have Yarbrough come in, pitch for three innings, and then you have Oliver Drake come in, pitch for three innings, and instead of using a starter, you use two um, basically relieving pitchers um, to pitch that day so that they cover your starting role. And I understand why they do did it, and it kind of worked, but it kind of didn't. Mostly it didn't work for the whole season because it was so difficult for them to continue that all the way through the season because Yarbrough was, you know, would if he was having a great day, you don't want to throw, you don't want to yank him out in the third inning because he's having a no hitter, like you know. So basically, not really used that much, but it is an option that you can choose. So in a nutshell, that's how we set up the whole bullpen. You can move guys from primary roles. You say yes, this is our best reliever. We want to use him more often. Um, this guy isn't very good, so we're going to avoid high leverage situations for him. This guy, um, he does decent, but he's not our favorite, so we're going to use him less often. And then let's say we want um, Chaz Rowe. We want him to come in in long relief situations. So we're going to put the long relief there. And then we're just going to we'll keep it normal. We're not really worried about that. And then second, we'll keep him at... 
Uh, let's go middle relief as well that way he does get in in some middle relief roles so that's how you basically set up all this and this is going to change as you go you can kind of mix and match people if you feel like Yarbrough only gives you three or four good innings maybe you select him and put him in here to a four-man rotation right like this Yarbrough is now down here you use him as an use him as a starting pitcher and then you use him as an opener uh anti banda you're going to use as a middle reliever and then you're going to use him as a follower so this is what's going to happen whenever the fourth fifth guy comes up they're going to need the emergency starting pitcher which is yarborough he's going to open it for three i believe it's three innings i think i'm not sure if it's an actual um number or if it's just they pitch until they're tired i don't know how that works in the game but yarborough comes in pitches and then banda comes in after him and follows up so another thing you can do if you're worried about pitch count and young pitchers say brendan mckay you want him to be on a pitch count because he's a young prospect you're feeling uh 80 pitches the max for him so you set the 80 count pitch right there then in the game when he gets to 80 it's not in the middle of the at bat but say he throws 83 pitches and it's the bottom of the fifth he has two outs he throws his 83rd pitch gets the guy out then they will pull him in the fifth inning and bring in some relievers and the only reason you would do that is if you are kind of worried about injury i don't notice i've tried it and i don't really notice anything as far as i don't notice pitch count affecting injury it might i'm not going to say it won't but i have not noticed the pitch count um, affecting any injury um, i do however sometimes like to put if you have a lot of long relievers in your bullpen if you have a bunch of guys here that have 45s and 50s and stuff what i like to do is put these guys on an 80 85 pitch count so they're going to pitch 85 pitches it's usually about six innings but it's going to basically cut them off that way they pitch 85 they come back the fifth day boom they're rested automatically there's no like oh they threw 115 pitches the game before because they only gave up three hits the whole game and then when it's up for their time they're at 91 percent you know it's it's kind of whatever you want to do i rarely re i rarely mess with the pitch count but it is another feature that you guys can set thank you so much guys for watching this episode if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up and also feel free to hit that red subscribe button i split this up into three parts because I, it took me over an hour to record this so this is the first part this is just the pitching next episode next week i will do the hitters and then the week after that i will do position players and how to set up stuff at the actual player level till next time slacker out